Hello and welcome to the Wendell Effect. My name is Brandon Wendell. I'll be guiding you through my view in the market for the upcoming week. And what a week it is. I'm uh, an Arsenal fan, as you can tell by the jersey right here. So uh, top of the table again this week. And hopefully we'll maintain that for quite some time to come. Anyway, getting along here, we're going to go ahead and just mention that we are not a registered broker dealers or investment advisors. Take a look at this information from an educational standpoint only. Not telling you to buy, sell, or hold any particular securities. And we're not subject to trading restrictions. We get a position in security and initiate one at any time. So make sure you stay in touch with me. You can give me feedback and uh, you can email me at brandonwendell.cmt at gmail.com. Hit me up on Twitter at TraderBW. And of course, we're here on YouTube as well. And look next month in November, we're going to do a live event here on YouTube. So that'll be coming up. We'll give you more of the details as we get everything settled. So be able to follow me there and be able to interact with me. It'd be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. So for today's schedule, we're going to start off obviously with our weekly market overview for the equity index futures, moving into the energy futures, jumping into sector analysis, and uh, we're not doing the Indian markets here anymore. We're actually going to do that as a separate video as I've been doing, uh, but I am going to add in crypto here at the end. Uh, somebody requested I do a little bit of crypto, so I'm going to pop in and take a look at see what's going on there. Starting off for the week of October 30th in the equity futures, the ES, uh, we already saw this. We had a bit of a... Um, positive divergence which made the markets move back to the upside excuse me but it doesn't look like the bear market's over not by a long shot we uh, need to do several things before that happens first of all we got to make a new high and we are very far from that we'd have to go up above about 4200 really before we make that new high and technically you can even call this the high at about 43 4400 so we're pretty far away from that we also need the rsi to go above 60. And the last several highs we made, we didn't get anywhere close to that and dropped. So I think we're not at the bottom of the market yet. I think the bottom of the market may be somewhere around 3,000, might even be a bit lower, but that's the next weekly demand zone right around 3,000 here. Looking at the ES on the daily, you can see we're punching through supply. We actually hit the supply, pulled back a little bit, and then pushed a little deeper into that supply. We couldn't get through it this week. We also couldn't quite get above 60. We finished at 59.40 on Friday afternoon. It'll be interesting to see how the markets open up today. And I think they just actually opened. So um, as I look down at my charts, let's see if my charts are open. I do have them open. So let's go up and take a look real quick at the ES. And if I go down to a 60 minute chart, just to see, you can see that Yep, Sunday we are open and pushing down just a little bit. So, you know, we're not worried about what's going on just for the day. Obviously, we're going to take a look at the big picture. But um, it does seem that, you know, unless we can get above on 60 on the daily, this may be our peak right now. We went a little deeper into that zone and may push back. There's really nothing keeping us down, though. You know, there is a possibility of going higher this week. Uh, so we'll have to kind of take it as it comes. Uh, technically, we are still in a bullish move here. And unless we break that trend line, you can actually draw a trend line if I do it on the ES. I'll go to a weekly chart here, refresh, and again, go down to the daily time frame. And let me clean this up for us. There we go. So the trend line I'm talking about pretty much it looks like this. And it's not quite a perfect trend line because we don't have the three touches around the line, but you get the idea. It's the, that overall move. So as long as we're still sloping upwards, you know, we're still in a bullish trend. And you can see we opened up and we're staying below 60. That would be a bearish signal that we're likely to go down this week or maybe even sideways. So go to the four hour chart and on the four hour, it looked like everything is still pretty bullish. We uh, formed an area of demand here at 3810. So if we start pulling back on Sunday night, if we're going to go back up, that would be the first bouncing area, 3810, 38, 3757. Now, the Dow or the S&P is not necessarily the market we want to look at. Here we look at all four markets together. We could see that the leader to the upside right now happens to be the Dow. That's the one that's dragging us higher. The NASDAQ was, but it gave up. Um, the NASDAQ has actually been the weakest market overall from the beginning of the year. But, you know, since that low we made back on the 14th of October, you know, mid-month here, you see the Dow has been kicking it off to the upside. So looking at the NASDAQ, not really much going on there either. You can see we didn't rally nearly as high as we did on the ES. The ES gave us a much bigger move up. Our, our overall move up, it retraced 61.8%. And again, I still think we're in a bearish trend. We'd have to break above 14,000 really to change my mind on that. 
On the daily chart, the NASDAQ didn't even get close to that supply zone that we broke on the S&P. Well, we didn't actually break it. We went deep into it, let's put it that way. But it's being dragged upward. So if you start to see weakness in the markets, the NASDAQ is going to offer you the best shorting opportunities because it is the weakest market out of all four equities. You can see that on the four hour chart, we did go above 60. What we got to watch for those, do we break this prior high and continue to move upwards? Right now we have a lower low. So we are still in a downtrend or starting a bit of a downtrend here, or maybe sideways. We don't really have much of a trend because we had higher high, but we had lower low. So we got to wait for that to resolve again. I'm looking more to the NASDAQ as the shorting opportunities rather than the longs, but I don't have anywhere to get in as of right now. So the Dow, this is the one that's really telling us where we're going to go if we're going to stall. On the weekly chart, you see we had the most retracement. We went all the way through that semi, you know, that drop base drop area here. And we're almost back up to the highs that we made back in midsummer, really. So that may act as a bit of supply at 33,485 to 34,246 this week. And if the Dow fails to get above that level and we fail to get above the 60 on the RSI for the Dow, that will be kind of the death knell for the move and you know the upward move and we should start moving back down again. So since we've had two weeks of this really bullish move, I would not be surprised to see some sort of a pullback this week anyway. We go down to the daily chart and this is not really a supply zone but that is some good selling pressure that originated right in that area about 33,000 so as we're coming up we may start to stall out a little bit i would just treat it as a pullback there's still actually a demand zone here that i didn't mark but it's a nice rally base rally demand if we pull back that would be a buying opportunity on the dow so we're talking about well you know let's again look at the live market and on the daily chart here of the Dow, again, this is the demand zone I was talking about. And you can see we opened up with a little bit of red after a big move, not surprising. You had some profit taking going on. But this could be a nice pullback buy opportunity, or we may only pull back to a Fibonacci retracement. The best is when you got the retracements lining up with the zones, which is approximately the 50% retracement and the 61.8. So look for a pullback to that area. If we uh, start to sell off a little bit on the daily, it might be a bouncing opportunity. Maybe not this week. It might happen next week. It depends on how big the red candles are pulling back. That'll also tell us how strong the bearish trend is. If we get big red candles, there's obviously a lot of bearish pressure still and a lot of fear in the markets. If we don't, then there still might be some more legs to the upside. On the four-hour chart, looking a little different here. You see there's a demand zone of 32,148. And then overhead supply still right in that 33. Five to 34,000 area. Looking at the Russell, the Russell's pretty much uh, kind of in the middle here. You can see it moved somewhat into this drop base drop area, couldn't move all the way up with the Dow, couldn't, you know, didn't stay down with the NASDAQ though either. But it is pretty weak, even though we had a positive divergence, it only led to a small correction. And on the daily chart, pretty much the same thing. You know, we broke out of this little supply zone. It had been tested multiple times, so no real supply, surprise. And we broke out above 60 on the RSI on the daily. So a little more bullish pressure here with higher lows and higher highs on the Russell. And there's really nothing overhead to stop us to get to 1981. So it's really up to the Dow. If the Dow keeps going higher, it's probably going to drag all the rest of the indexes with it. If the Dow fails at those zones that I was talking about earlier, then look for these to start dropping as well. And on the four hour chart, it didn't really have anything, unfortunately. The nearest zone is already tested at 1700. So I might have to go down and look at intraday opportunities on the 60 minute time frame. So moving over to the energy markets, let's take a look at crude oil for the start of the weekend. We basically put in a higher low, this confirmed it. And this new higher low on the weekly chart, not last week, but the week before, it was confirmed by last week because we made the higher high and uh, higher low. It was above 40, that's very bullish. So the sideways kind of choppiness we got, it looks as though crude oil is ready to move back up again and there's nothing to really hold it down to make new highs, it could. Uh, looking at the daily chart, we have a tested zone. You can see we retraced 61.8%. We've rallied back up, but here's the trouble. On the daily chart, we failed to get above 60 on the RSI. And because we failed to get above 60 there, whoops, I keep forgetting to move my photo there. Oop, down the bottom, there we are. Anyway, uh, looking at crude oil, like I said, when we rallied up, we should have gone above 60 like we did back here. 
since we're failing to get above 60, failing to go below 40, we might go a little bit sideways this week in crude. It may not be ready to rally yet. If it does, our target is 94.46. That's the tested zone, so it should go deeper into the zone, maybe even as high as 96. On the four-hour chart, we're getting a little pullback right now. The buying opportunity, if we pull back to 85.06, make sure the RSI is above 40. If the RSI is below 40, there's too much bearish momentum. We're likely to break through that little floor and go much lower. If not, if we're above 40, by the time we hit the 85, that's a buying opportunity and we should reach some new highs because this is a zone that's already been tested. So unless we form something on the way, I see it going higher this week. Looking at that gas, we have actually come down and bounced off of the weekly demand zone. But when we bounced off this demand zone, we were below 40, which means that's not a real good bounce. We're going to go through that zone. You see last week we finished with a huge topping tail. That is a lot of selling pressure that's telling us we're going to continue to go down. Most likely, not this week, but maybe the week after. But we should break through this area and go lower. You can see that looking at the daily chart, we have an impulse down, correction back up of about 50%, and now it looks like we're ready to impulse down with the ultimate target 4.474. That's the Fibonacci extension that duplicates the previous impulse and happens to be our daily demand zone back there. So I'm looking to continue to sell off, most likely, within intraday opportunities, even short-term swing, if we get a pullback to 6.138 on the four hour, that's what I'm looking to short. I've got really good selling pressure originates there. We might not have enough to get up to that area, enough buying pressure. So we might have to get a little more creative with an entry on a smaller time frame. But if I'm looking at the big swing right now, I'm looking to get short here at 6.138, targeting that five area and even lower. On gasoline, we bounced off demand. Again, we bounced below 40, which means no new highs for us before we pull back. Well, we did. We pulled back right there, put in a new low above 40. So gasoline, unfortunately, looks like it might be ready to head back up. We had a little bit of indecision at the end of last week with that sell off there. So it may not quite take off quickly. It might go a little sideways before we drift a little higher. On the daily chart, same thing. You see, we pulled back to demand. We were above 40, so we were able to make a new high on the next high, uh, sorry, the next move up. Now we're pulling back a little bit, look for a correction, maybe to the 2.5 area before we bounce and try to head up to 276. That'll be probably where we hit by the end of the week. On the four hour chart, we're opening right at a little demand zone. So it'll be interesting to see where we open if we push up a little bit. Really, I'm not gonna look at the overnight too much. I'll look at the uh, when the bell officially rings for the regular trading hours in gasoline at 9 a.m. on Monday morning. And we'll probably end up bouncing off this area. Uh, again, we stayed above 40, we came into demand. We had a little bit of selling pressure, but we're likely to bounce and go upwards a little bit from here. Heating oil, we also bounce off of demand, but we were above 40 when we bounced demand and therefore we made a move to try to test the highs. We kind of failed and pulled back, but it looks like we're making another run. Heating oil, we're obviously coming in also to colder weather in the northern hemisphere. So you're going to be seeing more demand for heating oil anyway. Seasonally, this is a big time for it. So you're probably going to get some more price movement to the upside. But if we do get a pullback, this could even act as a little bit of demand here at 3.7. But I definitely have demand at 3.5693. So that's definitely a buying opportunity if we do pull back at all in heating oil. So I'm going to take a shift now and take a look at the stock market and see what's going on with the hot stocks, stock sector performance for this upcoming week. Okay, so starting off for the last six months, you can see that the only positive sector, well, not only, I guess, because we have a little bit of healthcare, but it's really energy that's been leading us to the upside for the most part. It's weird. The market, market was up. And looking for the past week, yeah, we got participation across the board. As a matter of fact, energy was the least participating. And you could see that some of the bigger ones, well, 699, we got industrials in the lead, but right behind it, utilities and staples, although real estate financials had a bit too, but that's kind of the safety move again towards that downward curve in the equity markets. So I don't think we're out of the woods yet. So taking a look at the broad market, you can see that earnings obviously hit some of these stocks, Meta, Amazon. Uh, so that's how we fared for the past week, so to speak. But uh, overall, it was pretty bullish. And we might get a little bit more of the same. It could be a little choppy this week. We'll take a look.
Yep. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was the past month's performance. This is the past week's performance. Again, earnings. They hurt a bunch of stocks. So look at the sector ETFs. XLY actually did finally get close to our first. Uh, I'm sorry, it didn't get close to the target. It actually pulled back again to the origin of the, the previous impulse. So it really is just choppy and sideways. And we didn't get above 60 right now. So it looks at overall like even though we pulled back in the discretionary, we're still pretty bearish here. We could just go a bit sideways this week. Eventually we'll hit that 132. It just may not be this week. On BKNG, booking came back into the entry point. As you can see, came into my area of, of supplies looking for. But when we hit it, it looks like we were just above 60. So it's not looking like it's going to be a really good short opportunity, even though we might drop soon. We do have earnings coming up pretty quick. I believe that's November 2nd, which would be Tuesday. So I don't really want to be in a position right before earnings. There's better option trades that I get into usually selling uh, you know, straddles, strangles, or something like that, or even iron condors, that'll be a better opportunity than trying to take this short. So even though it finally came into the entry, I'm abandoning that trade, I'm not gonna take it. The risk is not worth the reward to get. Oops, sorry, missing one here. There we go, communication sector, we got the XLC. This was last week, and it was pulling back towards the entry for a short that I was talking about. So we go to this week now, and you can see it actually hit. So hopefully you're able to take that short, the RSI closed below 60, so that's a good good short. And it looks like we are going to be making it down to that target, hopefully sometime this week. Maybe we'll gap down there, but you can see, uh, I guess it was going Thursday morning is where we gapped down. Friday, we tried to rally a little bit, but communication sector looks like it's going to continue to push down. And if you got short, make sure your stops are in place. And it should at least be a break even at this point. Maybe even take some profits by putting the stop just above this 49.03, maybe about 49.15, and allow it to run. Uh, XLK, the uh, uh, technology sector, actually broke a little bit to the upside. You can see it broke out of supply, and it looks like we're making another new high, but we didn't make a high in momentum. I guess we did a little bit. So we'll have to see if this can get above 60, then we'll actually have more movement to the upside. If not, it's not a great supply zone, but this 132 area could act as a little bit of a push to the downside. If we fail to close above 60, you know, we might get some sort of a candle with a big topping tail that pushes down. Watch for that. If that happens, look for shorting opportunities down to 112, and that whole sector should go down with it. XLI, the industrials, is on a tear to the upside. This was, I showed you, the biggest performing sector, and it's for real. It, it put in a low last week right here. This was, uh, I think, Monday? No. Monday was here. It was gapped up. So that actually confirmed the low being put in. And you can see that, um, okay, so this looks like we want to keep on going here. If it does pull back, look for just some sort of a retracement, actually. Uh, let me take a look at this XLI on the daily time frame. Because actually what I need to do is get rid of this Fibonacci because really we're not using that. It's going to be the current impulse. You could claim here is a low. Or really, I would look at this whole move as our impulse to the upside. And we haven't started retracing yet, but if we do start to retrace, we might just get a pullback to one of these levels before we bounce. Just keep an eye out for that. But this is a very bullish sector, and you can possibly even look for some trade opportunities in the industrial sector, believe it or not, as long as the broad market is also bullish as well. The building materials was bullish, but kind of gave up at the end of the week and ended up not getting above 60. So that's kind of interesting that we did break out. Obviously, it was already tested zone, so that doesn't mean anything anymore. We retraced 61.8% of our impulse. Question is, is, are we done pulling back and getting ready to drop? Well, we just need to see what happens with our move when the market opens on Monday. If we break this low without going above 60 or closing above 60, then yeah, we're going to head back down. If we end up getting above 60 on the RSI, there's still some underlying bullish momentum, especially if you can break the highs of this little cluster right here around, uh, it's about 75 bucks. So if that happens and expect it to not really move up fast, but move up, drift upwards basically. On the energy chart, this is kind of wild. We went back and forth with this trend line. We were using it as, a, as kind of a support. Now we're using it as a little resistance. Now maybe back to support. So it looks as though we're just kind of walking along up this trend line. And this also has a very strong bullish momentum behind it. So it looks like energy may continue to drift a little bit higher. It's obviously inflationary. And I did say gasoline and oil may still have some moves to the upside as well. 
on the XLP consumer staples, it looks like a little bit of panic here. People rushing into those staples all of last week. We had a gap up and then the big run up on Friday. It was pretty much predicted. We I had this extension here where I was expecting moves to the upside as of last week. So it really just kind of filled in what we expected. Usually after a big move like this, we'll get some sort of a sell off, a little bit of profit taking. So expect a bit of a pullback. You might even be able to put in you know, those retracements yet again. Here it is. If I go live, obviously the market's not open yet, but we might get a bit of a pullback before we go a bit higher. So let me remove that. There we go. And you can see that if we pull back, we may actually just pull back to this as a little bit of demand. It's kind of rally based rally at about 72, just under that to 71. So watch for a possible bounce after a pullback on the staples, consumer staples, XLP. On the XLV, the healthcare. We actually ended up hitting the second level supply. We were already into the first level before, so we obviously went through that pretty easily. Momentum is very bullish here too. So any kind of pullback, it might just be a temporary pullback before we eventually eventually go higher. So same thing here. If I go to XLV on the daily, get rid of these guys because they're no use anymore. And that's gonna break. So we take a look at our current impulse, and if we do pull back, look for one of these fib retracements to be a bouncing point. You know, look for the bullish pressure to come in on maybe 60 minute or four hour charts. So that way when it comes down to this uh, 130, 61, you see if the bullish pressure is picking up and you jump in on the long for the markets to continue to move higher. And on the utilities, that also moved up pretty well. Again, same thing, we had this parabolic move, not parabolic, I guess, it's a little, a little strong, but uh, not parabolic. But anyway, that move up is likely to be retraced. We did not get above 60 here. We bounced off a of weekly demand, of course, so that's what caused this move to the upside and the shift of the trend where we have higher lows and higher highs now. But we may be coming to the end. This is probably going to be a sideways move in security, and there's a really good supply zone right here at the 50% retracement. So I don't expect this to go above 69.29. I think it's going sideways. I look for another sector. Financials, that's a bullish one. I thought it was going to turn around at this area of supply, but as you can see, when it moved down, failed to gain any bullish momentum, and we reversed and broke through the stop. So unfortunately that didn't work out, but it looks like financials might be able to pull back before continuing up to 3540. That's the next overhead supply. That's my target for the week because I think the financials might actually get a boost. So we'll have to watch for that. And the last sector, real estate, also pulled back, but again, it failed to get above 60. So keep an eye on this one. It might be a failed rally. And if we bounce off the 38.2, we could end up going lower than 33 to the downside. So not really big on the real estate sector there. It looks like it could go sideways or down. Uh, there was a trade idea I had on Well, uh, well Tower. And let's see. Nope, that was it. Uh, I wasn't sure if I had followed through yet. It looks like it's just going sideways. The fact that we're just going sideways, we haven't run into the entry. I'm just going to abandon the trade. Now, speaking of trades, I had a few ideas I was looking at. Microsoft is one, and we had the earnings. Earnings came out. We pulled back, but not enough, unfortunately. I was hoping it would have hit this demand zone already and given us that bounce, and it just didn't do it, so I'm going to walk away from this one because it's not setting up the way I wanted to. Electronic Arts, fortunately, gave us a warning sign as it came into this supply zone. Instead of shorting, you could see it was actually on this candle when it hit the zone. It went above 60. So that tells me supply is a lie, as you can see, it went above. So hopefully you saw that as a warning like I did and did not take the short electronic arts. Anyway, uh, that's not where we're ending here. We're going to, to uh, my bad here, let me go ahead and get to the right section here for some reason. There it is, crypto. So as I said, I was going to introduce some crypto here. So we have some crypto for the week of September 30th, just some of the big names out there. You can see the map. We were actually pretty bullish for this week. XRP was one of the lone bigger ex exceptions for the bullish run, but Bitcoin went up, uh, Ethereum, and a few others. Uh, anyway, overall green. Looking at Bitcoin, though, we do have a negative divergence that's going on. Uh, we got a negative divergence that's suggesting that we're actually going to get a pullback here on the daily chart, and I'm looking for it to fall back down towards that 19,588 demand zone. There's nothing else really to hold it up. On the four hour chart, it's kind of confirming that because we have a double top with that divergence. You notice we had that second peak with a lot less momentum than the first peak, so we could possibly roll over with this double top, 
if we break that neckline at 20,000, basically we're going to hit the 19,345 or even the measured move of 19,000 as possible. On Ethereum, we got a lot of overhead resistance. We did possibly poke through, well, not possibly, we did poke through the supply zone here, but there's a lot of overhead resistance. And with the momentum dying off like this, Ethereum is likely to pull back as well. I didn't mark it, but there's an area of demand right here that'll probably be the target. We'll have to look to see if we can bounce there. Let's take a look. If I bring up Ethereum, there we are. And on the daily chart, I think I might have put it on the four hour chart actually, but there it is on the daily chart, ignore this label for now. And at 1639.80, uh, 1324, that's the target for the pullback basically. So going back to my slides here, and on the four hour, yeah, I did label it here 1354, 1324. That, if the RSI is above 40, that would be your buy point for Ethereum to possibly continue the rally. But that's all I've got so far there. XRP also very bearish. You can see we tried to rally. We're making lower highs here, and we're about to make a lower low. XRP just put in a peak, and we were way below 60. And you can see we actually closed below 50 even. So it looks like we're going to head down towards the 39.21.4 area. On the four-hour chart, same thing. Kind of a double top formation right here. Getting ready to break that little neckline and run down to 40, if not that 39 area I was talking about earlier. So that's what I got for you for this week. If you got any more questions or suggestions, again, you got my email address. I will look forward to seeing you again next week. Until then, trade safe, trade well, and take care, everybody.